Today, I'm gonna to share with you eight tricks I think every KeyShot user should know. And before you leave, make sure you download the free KeyShot rendering roadmap linked below. Let's dive in. Number one is the rounded edges tool. Sometimes we're working with CAD data that has sharp edges. Sharp edges are bad because in the real world, no edge is completely sharp. We need rounded edges to reflect light to give our objects some form. To fix this, we'll use the rounded edges tool. In this case, I've got a bunch of detail on this PCB. If I select the PCB within the scene tree, then down below, I can expand the rounded edges accordion. I'll type in a small radius, like 0.1. As soon as I hit enter, we should see these edges of these small metallic components now reflecting light, giving them a more 3D, more realistic appearance. Of course, we can change this value on each part or on each subassembly as needed. So I could select just these small squares and I could type in a smaller value if that was more appropriate. Next, we have the Move Tool hotkey. Currently, the whole PCB assembly is selected, so if I hit Control D, I will invoke the Move Tool and I can drag this wherever I want. I'll bet you didn't know, though, that I could select an entire part without even clicking on anything. So if I deselect the PCB and I hover over a component and hit Control D, I will now automatically invoke the Move Tool for the part that was underneath my cursor at the time. I'll hit Cancel to escape, and I could also deselect once again and choose a different part by hovering over a different piece and hitting Control D, and there we go. Okay, for this next one, I want to unhide the housing, and if I grab this entire assembly, let's say I want to perform a mirror well, I can actually go under the scene tree in the position tab, find one of the axes I want to do a mirror along, in this case, the Z, and I'll type in negative one. And when I hit enter, you'll see that we essentially reflected the object along the Z axis. And if I hit Z on the keyboard, we'll see the Z axis drawn in this little locator down below. So once again, if I want to reverse that, I'll select the assembly, I'll type in positive one, and it will mirror the object right back where it was. Using linked materials is a great way to streamline your workflow. I've got a lot of these gold details on this PCB, and if I were to apply a material just to one of them, you'll notice it updates the appearance of many other parts on this PCB. Now what if I want to isolate just a group of these from this linked material set? I can Control alt left click on the PCB to hide it, then I can make a multi-selection using shift and left click dragging a box around the objects I wish to isolate. Now with these selected, I'll right click, go to material, isolate materials to selection. Now, if I apply a new appearance to just one of these, you'll see that I change the appearance of this entire group without affecting the other linked materials. So sometimes I use plastic instead of metal in KeyShot because KeyShot metals tend to behave like mirrors. And in the real world, metals aren't often totally mirror-like, meaning that they often have coatings or oxidization and other attributes that make them a little bit harder to replicate in KeyShot. My workaround is to use plastics. So for example, if I select this piece of this resistor, you'll see it's a plastic, and the way it looks super metallic is by increasing the refractive index. Normally it would be a set to 1.5, but if I crank this all the way up to seven, you can see we've got this metallic appearance. Same goes for the feet on these other components. I've got these also uh, plastic, and I find that sometimes using plastics in KeyShot allow me to control the diffuse and specular uh, properties a little more easily and reduce fireflies within the scene. All right, so let's say I wanna create an awesome clay rendering of this object without undoing all the hard work I put into these materials and without opening another KeyShot file. I'll just go to the Scene tab, expose my model sets, grab the active model set, right click and duplicate. I'll go ahead and rename it to clay and I'll turn it on, double click it, and then search for my diffuse material in the KeyShot material library drag this right onto the top of the assembly of our new model set. Now everything is the same linked material, and if we wanna go back to the old one, just double click on our previous model set. You could follow the same process for anything like uh, tune drawing or anything else too. 
Now let's say I want to create a section view of my product here. I'll hit Control-1 on the keyboard, which will add a cube to the scene. Then I will set the pivot of that cube to be aligned with my product. And then I'll snap to that pivot. I will rotate the cube into position a little bit. And then I want to scale it. So I'll select the yellow cube in the middle. And I can type a value for my scale. I just want to make sure it's big enough to encompass my product. And I'll hit OK. Next, I'll double click the cube to change its material to cutaway. And I'll choose inherit caps. And then from here, I'll hit the Control D again to move my cube. And as I drag to position it, we should start to see our product in its section view. Sometimes when you have an oddly shaped object like this, placing it on a flat surface can be quite tedious. But luckily, there's a faster way. We'll grab the PCB from the scene tree, and I'll hit Control D to get the Move tool. And then we can choose the Settle option, in which Keyshot should allow it to fall to the ground and settle into position. I'll click OK when it's finished. And in just a matter of seconds, we have the object placed on the surface in a convincing manner.